Good evening. Uh, welcome to our program on the downtown reconstruction here in Ashland. Uh, I'm Doris Overturf. I'll be moderating this panel. We're going to break our program into two segments. Uh, in the second segment, we'll be bringing on our um, highway surveyor, Ben Montenegro, our police chief, Bob Gonfriday, and Tom Robertson, the president of the Ashland Chamber of Commerce, to get into more specifics. But the first part of our program, uh, we will be talking about a little bit about the background of this project and um, some of the uh, uh, general uh, aspects of it. And I'd like to welcome to this first segment uh, some folks that are here from the state. And starting on my immediate left, we have Betty Fancy, who is in David Magnani, Representative Magnani's office. And next to Betty, we have Fair Stevenson, who is an aide to Barbara Gardner, also our state representative. And I'd like to also introduce to you the Assistant Commissioner of Public Works, Ellen D. Geronimo, and the resident engineer for this project, Ken Talanian. Welcome, and thank you very much for coming. I'd also like to mention that both representatives were tied up either with hearings or with votes that were going to be taken. And uh, uh, Ed Burke, who had expected to be here at the last moment, also had to uh, bow out, and we're sorry he couldn't make it, but we're very happy that all of you could. Um, uh, as I understand it, about eight to ten years ago, someone made a recommendation to the town that they get involved with what was known as the Topics Program, and uh, this uh, uh, spread out into two separate programs, one of which became urban systems that had to do with the downtown area of Ashland that needed some refurbishing. And the uh, topics program itself, which has to do with five different intersections. Today, we're here to talk about the urban systems program, but you may hear the topics program mentioned because there are places where the two sort of come together. And um, uh, Ellen, uh, I wonder if, as Assistant Commissioner of Public Works, you might like to start us off by uh, just telling us a little bit about what these programs are. Certainly. Well, this is a sure sign that spring is here, that both Ken and I are, are with you this afternoon to discuss the beginning of the construction of your downtown project. Uh, I certainly recognize the fact that your community has been working hard and long and, and at times very anxiously about getting this project underway. Uh, the project, uh, as I think most people know, is an urban systems project. It uh, is a total amount of $1.7 million to be invested in the infrastructure upgrading of downtown Ashland. And uh, our contractor for this project is the LAL Construction Company of Fall River. Uh, perhaps the most important, yeah. uh, the most important uh, new addition to your community will be Ken Tulanian here to my left, who is the resident engineer and is the day-to-day -day representative of the department. We expect that, uh, well, first of all, we ask the community to work with Ken and to be patient because, of course, uh, you can't begin a project like this and develop it without having disruption. And Ken will explain in more detail what uh, the various aspects of that are. But we do ask the community to be patient at the same time, if they have concerns, that they should either bring them to Ken or to your representatives, um, who you'll be hearing from later, who deal uh, with the day-to-day -day problems of the community. But in the in the long run, uh, the community is going to enjoy a safety upgrading and a much improved traffic flow that will be the end result of the project and uh, a visual improvement also to the area. We're very happy to be working with the town of Ashland. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> Ken, uh, we'll be talking more specifics in the second segment, yes. but just at this point, could you perhaps say just sort of what general area this is going to cover, where there are going to be traffic lights? In other words, what are we really talking about? And then I'd like to come back to the um, uh, folks here from the representative's office. Yes, at present we have completed uh, all the drainage <laughs> on the project and we'll be starting April 1st and what we intend to do then is the water services along Main Street at Central going towards summer 
And also, we will be moving the World War I Memorial it's from uh, Green Square to Front Street. And we have the uh, traffic signals audited, and they will probably be going in place, I would say, in mid middle of May to the first part of June. Where are the traffic signals going to be? We are going to have a full set of signals at Summer, Maine, and Homer. Where the, po where the, the, the post the office and the office center square. pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have another set at the um, fire station and police station mm -hmm. and Front Street which should alleviate a lot of the problems that you have there now. Is that second set not going to be a full set? If that's a full set They're both also, full yes. Sets. And, okay. and they all will have uh, railroad preemption so that when the trains go through the center, they will uh, turn red so that mm -hmm. they stop all traffic. And then at High, Pleasant, and Cordoville Road, we will have a flashing red and yellow. Signal. High, pleasant, and oh, there's going to be a flashing red right near, yes. the, not right near the bridge. Right near the bridge, right where there's a uh, horizontal curve there that's mm -hmm. really dangerous. Mm -hmm. So the project so is going to run all the way from uh, all the length of Pleasant Street. Well, not the complete length. No, we'll go no. from uh, Main Street up to Cherry, and then we jump down to. And then uh, you jump to that other High Street, intersection. Yes. Okay, and it's going to run a lot from Pleasant along Main Street from Pleasant. Or from Myrtle from Street, Myrtle to all the uh, way, Central, all the way to Central, and uh, along Front Street from Maine. Well, it'll be full depth excavation from Maine to Concord, and then mm -hmm. there'll be an overlay from Concord up to the bridge over the uh, Sudbury mm -hmm. River on and Front Street. And then Homer Avenue. Homer Ave, we go down to uh, Alden. Right down as far as yes. Alden. Okay. And we don't intend to uh, work at that location this year because we completed most, most of, of that, that last, last year. year. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Let's um, let's talk to you for a minute, Betty, and uh, maybe uh, you can tell us a little bit about how uh, the legislature fits into this picture, and particularly each representative and their aides and so on. Well, I think the state legislator's job is to uh, be the liaison between the town and the state and federal government. The state legislators have access and know how to access the system. They know how to get federal grants, state grants, where money is available for special projects that need to be done. And they keep in tune with the town of Ashland and, and Framingham for Representative Magnani so that they are aware of their various and sundry needs. So it's a I think their job to be in touch with both the needs of their constituents, which is the town of Ashland here, and the resources that are available on the state level and to bring the two together. And uh, the aide's job is to do the day-to-day -day telephoning, contacting, keeping track of uh, time frames, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's um, a necessary and a very useful job, I think. Thank you. And Fair, uh, you work with uh, Representative Barbara Gardner, and I think you actually have been doing a little work on something that at least has something to do with this project. We have a and little bit. Um, I could repeat what Benny said, that I think that Barbara sees one of her primary roles as a legislator to be a, a link between the towns and the state and help the towns run the maze of state agencies and to find, get the information they need to have. And uh, for this project, Barbara has been working closely with the highway department and with um, Ben Montenegro, and especially in investigating uh, grant uh, opportunities for Ashland in the parking, in the off-street parking area. And if you don't mind if I read what she wrote here. No, please um, do. There were two possibilities, and these are I now... Um, Mr. Montenegro will follow through on this. Uh, there are two chances for grant money to buy uh, land for parking. One is the off-street parking grant program administered through the Executive Office of Administration and Finance. And um, to be eligible for this, a town has to be a part of a CARD program. CARD is an acronym for Commercial Area Revitalization District. And although doing the paperwork may not be the most fun, we think if it pays off in money, it might be worth trying for. The other uh, grant opportunity is the Public Works Economic Development Program. 
and they call it PWED, which isn't as good as card, but, uh, and it, it does not exclude parking. And uh, Barbara has written to Mr. Montenegro, in Ashland's case, the argument could be made that commercial revitalization and increased parking go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So this has been our small part in this, uh, in doing some research. Well, I know at the ne in the next segment we'll be talking, I think, quite a bit about parking. Mm -hmm. And this project, while it's not exactly part of this urban systems program, it's sort of actually the next step along because we realize that there will have been some some parking yeah. problems that will come up and that uh, may not get completely solved in the urban systems program. So I think we uh, in Ashland will be calling on uh, on both uh, Representative Magnani and Representative Gardner and Senator Ed Burke <laughs> for all the help we can get. And we um, realize that a lot of that work is done by AIDS. <laughs> and uh, we, I think a lot of people, uh, more people will appreciate your work than you perhaps have, have realized up till now. And uh, is now um, uh, Commissioner G. Geronimo and Ken Talanian are going to be staying with us for the second segment. And uh, I know that you folks have to get back and, and, do, and do, do your aiding. So uh, I just want to say that we appreciate, again, all your help and appreciate your coming. And I'm sure we'll be calling on you again really very soon. And Ellen, you look as though yes. you want to say something just, else. Just as a follow-up to the work that Representative Gardner has done uh, and that uh, Fair has, has explained to you, the um, off-street parking program really does have a relationship to the urban systems project. And um, it, it is a good idea, and I, and I know that Ken has already volunteered to, to help with this, to evaluate the number of parking spaces that were lost as a result of this construction program. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a safety upgrading uh, that's very important to both your uh, pedestrian vehicular uh, folks, but there is, you know, there there are parking spaces that were lost as a result of the design of this project, and um, that's taken into consideration through the off-street parking program. Mm -hmm. So we'll look forward to working with you also. As a last, uh, before we close this segment, there's a last uh, mm -hmm. item. <laughs> you mentioned 1.7 million dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, would you tell us, is Ashland going to have to pay all that money? <laughs> we oh, know no, we that's, don't. That's, What's the, what, that's what are the, the grant. The, uh, what are the percentages? The, the grant is uh, a uh, federal and state uh, combination of funds, 75% uh, state and 25% federal, federal funds. 25%. And uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to mm -hmm. you know, join the Good. two levels of government together. and. Uh, as in, you know, in your explanation of the project and, and the uh, various aspects that Ken talked about, I think the urban systems funding project requires a lot of work and a lot of understanding between the local government, the state government, and the federal government. It really is a program that when it's completed can prove that uh, go levels of government can work together. Good. Thank you. Um, uh, well, I think we'll close this segment and thank you again very much for coming. And we'll be back in just a few minutes with the second segment of our program. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting thank us. You. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the second segment of our program on the uh, downtown reconstruction in Ashland. And we've added some new faces. On my left is Tom Robinson, the chairman of the Ashland Chamber of Commerce. Uh, another familiar face to you all, I'm sure, our police chief, Bob Gonfriday. 
And Ken Talanian, the uh, resident uh, engineer for this project from the state, is uh, with us for the second half as well as the first part, as is Ellen D. Geronimo, the assistant commissioner of public works. And another familiar face to most of you is Ben Montenegro, our highway surveyor. <coughs> Uh, when we left the first segment, we'd been talking about the cost of this project, and uh, one of the things that we didn't mention was that Ashland did have to pay something for this project, and it was for the engineering. And uh, the, I think there were two separate appropriations of money at town meeting, which came to, uh, I think the first one was uh, 300000 the second was I think another forty, or maybe the forty was in the three hundred. I'm not sure. But then at the upcoming town meeting, there will be a request for another $14,000, which will be the final uh, phase of the uh, engineering cost. So that will be the cost to the town, and we're very fortunate to have the other $1,700,000 uh, uh, taken care of by the state and federal government. Uh, Tom, let's just start out with you for a moment, and perhaps you could explain uh, what the role of the chamber has been and you as its president in uh, working with some of the folks on the uh, reconstruction project. Sure, Doris. Uh, we're very pleased to have had the opportunity to participate in the process, and uh, it's been a long process. Uh, the chamber has been uh, fairly actively involved uh, right along, and we're down to the construction part, and, and our concerns are one to give as much support that we can to the project that's badly needed and our, our concerns also are to work in uh, conjunction with the people who are doing the work to understand what's happening, when it's taking place and what effect it may have on the downtown businesses and the access to those businesses. In addition to that, uh, we're concerned uh, as well with the topics and the intersections and from the safety standpoint, there's a lot of concern about the safety and the access to crossings. The, uh, traffic patterns and et cetera. And we've been uh, very actively uh, uh, involved in that and pleased to have been involved in that. And um, we're looking out for the interest of the business as well as the town. And we've enjoyed uh, uh, working with it so far and looking forward to bringing it to a very good closure. Thank you. Um, I should mention that I live right on Main Street, <laughs> right in the middle of all this. So I feel as though I know a lot of the concerns of the the people who are in the area, and you certainly know the concerns of all the um, merchants and uh, businesses in the area. And uh, between us, I think we can ask a lot of good questions, maybe. <laughs> um, Bob, uh, would you perhaps uh, want to say something right at this point about uh, just an overview about traffic, and then there'll be some specific questions probably later. At, uh, Ken is going to go over the uh, area that is going to be uh, revitalized and I really can't comment on the on specifics but in general once the construction starts we will be putting up enough signs throughout the whole downtown section to reroute traffic and be, give people uh, a sense of direction of, especially the newcomers to town um, there'll be police officers out there directing traffic uh, at various intersections and other than that I, I can't comment until we get a schedule from uh, Ken uh, Ken, maybe this is a good, po a good point at which you could uh, use the map and uh, point out to people where, s where all this is going to take place. We'll be starting with uh, <coughs> water services on Main Street for the entire length. And then we will start across from the post office and we'll move the World War I monument to a location on the corner of Front Street across from the fire station. From there, we will then start uh, the full depth excavation on Front Street down to Concord and start placement of the uh, mast arms and signals in front of the fire station and police station right there. And also there will be, at the same time, there will be another set of lights at the post office intersection with Summer, Homer, and Maine. From there, we will go down to Pleasant Street and we'll make a little widening in this area here, put a long banana island there, and then go down at the location in front of Fenwall. We'll have an illuminated curved sign here and also on the opposite side over here to give advance notice of the curve going down. Front Street, 
most of the work will be in this area here is a bridge over the Sudbury River. There I will work closely with the police chief to get a uh, detour set up because they will be working doing bridge rail here and redoing the concrete. This area in through here it will be resurfaced with new guardrail on both sides. And at the Cordeville High and Pleasant Street location there will be a flashing traffic signal here and also there will be a widening here at High Street. And this curve has been on the opposite side has been changed. So that when we put the signal here, we will have enough, hopefully, uh, advanced warning for the vehicular traffic along Pleasant Street and coming out of High. Basically, that's what we have. And then once after the water service, we'll start full depth excavation a block at a time to minimize any inconvenience to the motoring public. And that's about what we have planned for the whole area. Thank you. Um, when do you expect the first work to start? I expect the first work to start on, as far as the water service on Main Street on April 1st. April 1st. And then when you talk about the water service, what, what do you, is this the water pipes? This is the water going into each individual home. At the widening we're going to have to uh, redo the water services and move the oh. shutoffs to the back of the sidewalk. I see. And then we'll start the excavation and uh, at a block at a time and then work with the uh, gravel, dense graded stone and then the asphalt mm -hmm. in that entire area. Okay. About sidewalks, are we going to have sidewalks where we now have sidewalks and, and what sort of upgrading is going to be done? Are there going to be, is there going to be an extension of sidewalks? You'll have sidewalks at the present locations and we will uh, install wheelchair ramps to facilitate uh, wheelchairs mm -hmm. throughout the project. And most of the sidewalks will be concrete. And have curbings? And, cur uh, and granite curb. So all of the grass verges will be eliminated in this area, is yes, that right? Yes, that's correct. In order to widen the street. That's right. Okay. Um, perhaps I should ask uh, uh, Ellen, uh, about some of the general, how long will this project probably take? When will it finally be finished? It sounds like such a long project. Well, for this, this season, uh, we'll be over in November 28th, if we can all think that far. Um, I, I think that I'll defer to Ken for more specifics beyond that. But um, I would expect that, you know, the town will be actively involved throughout the summer into the late fall. And uh, it's important for everyone to know that one lane of traffic will be kept open at all times. Uh -huh. And as the chief mentioned, uh, as, the, as Ken gets the program from the contractor, uh, s appropriate signs and detours will be installed as advance warnings to the people who are very familiar with your area, but also for those mm -hmm. new folks coming through the town. The, uh, if the pro I heard something that if the program isn't finished when it sh is supposed to be, that then the const uh, construction company has penalties that uh, have to be uh, taken into account. Well, is that correct? Or? That would depend. Um, you know, Ken touched on the, the first phase is, is the connection of the individual water lines or, or you know, reconnect, reconnecting in a new location. Uh, there are times that there are legitimate uh, situations that arise during a project that uh, the department feels allows for an extension of time. That's a, that, that happens very often in a project mm -hmm. and uh, you know there is a, a process that we go through to determine whether it is in fact legitimate. Mm -hmm. um, if for some reason the contractor doesn't abide by the program and the schedule and have his equipment on time and the various things that, that Ken will be monitoring, then there, there could be assessed damages. Mm -hmm. Any extension, though, would have to fall over into the next spring, would yeah, it? Yes, yeah. it would, and it would require uh, the Board of Commissioners uh, to vote on that. Okay. 
Uh, ben, as I understand it, I think you're going to be <laughs> you're going to be the resident <laughs> uh, <coughs> local person to uh, to uh, keep uh, in close touch with this project on behalf of the town and the selectmen and so on. And uh, why don't you tell us what your role is going to be? Well, my role is to try to coordinate the various things between the state, the contractor, and the town. I'm sorry that Ed Bates couldn't make this because he was instrumental in getting this off the ground. It laid dormant for a number of years and you get involved and uh, with the rest of the selectmen he did a hell of a job uh, bringing it to uh, being. I will probably be working with Chief Guard Friday, Fire Chief, the state, and the contractor to ensure that the safety and the project goes along the way we want it to. Uh, speaking of the fire chief, Bob, I believe you've been in touch with uh, the fire chief on this whole safety uh, issue. Does he have any particular concerns? Uh? His concerns, uh, we addressed those at a preliminary meeting some time ago, and as we get more in-depth into the construction, uh, one lane is going to be remain open on all segments of the project and those that we can't the, then we'll have to coordinate those so that he can uh, get his trucks and equipment to wherever we have to get to. Uh, th that will have to be very closely monitored and we have discussed that and we're continuing to discuss it with Ken. Mm -hmm. Fine. Um, uh, as, a, as a resident myself, uh, I, I know I've been concerned about we did lose trees on Main Street and I'm sure this has happened perhaps on some of the other streets <coughs> too. Um, is there any way to, the, as part of this project, to make up for the loss of the trees uh, by other plantings or what have you? Yes, uh, in the project we have uh, red oak trees that will replace that uh, areas where the, we remove trees for the widening so that whatever we took down will be replaced. Oh, with I red think, oak trees. Oh, you know, that's very comforting because I know quite a few of my neighbors, they, they've looked and said, oh, our street is going to be ruined, you know. And no. So that's great. Now, where will those be planted? Uh, those uh, along Main Street, Front mm -hmm. Street. Will they be planted on the inside of the sidewalk or on the outside? Or how will they, or is the sidewalk going to be widened mm -hmm. so it will accommodate trees? No, they'll be at the back of sidewalk. The back of the yes. sidewalk. We have to have wheelchair clearance in mm -hmm. the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. Good. And red oak. I'm not red that oak. I'm not that familiar with them. Uh, what what are the, some of the good things about red oaks? <laughs> well, it's a hardy tree for this area, mm -hmm. and it's a nice shade tree. Mm -hmm. And not subject to disease. I mean, because that's been a problem with some of well, the trees we've had in the past. There aren't that many uh, diseases for the red oak. However, the maple tree we've been having a lot of trouble with, mm -hmm. uh, where it's a surface rooted tree. The salt and the the heat from uh, the pave, uh, when the roots are under the pavement, it does cause considerable damage to the maple tree. So the department has decided to go with the red oak. Good. So those should last us perhaps better than some of our other trees have. Uh, Certainly. Well, that's great. Another, uh, where you mentioned the banana. At Island uh, at uh, Pleasant uh, Street. We have had sort of a little triangle there. Uh, that uh, we've had some local people who have put plantings in every year and uh, is that banana going to accommodate any sort of planting too or is it going to Not be... Not at this time, no, it's no. going to be have a concrete surface. Mm -hmm. Are there any other areas, and I'm kind of th going to throw this open to anyone who knows the answer, are there any other um, plans for sort of beautifying the uh, downtown section at the same time that we do the project? Any other plantings or anything of that nature that's planned? Other than the oak trees, no. Yeah, uh, Doris, we were lucky enough to get Conrail and uh, achieve their land. We're hoping to uh, put parking over there with sort of uh, some tree planting and uh, some benches and things that sort of would dress up the downtown area. And one other thing that I didn't say is that we, as a highway surveyor, will act as a coordinator. And there's a lot of different people involved in this project, such as Edison telephone company, fire department, cable vision. And we have to remove, I think, any 30 poles on Main, on main Street? 35. 35 Main Street, so that means you have to get them removed, put the new poles in, 
But before you remove them, you've got to take the wires off, so you've got to schedule, which we did on Homer. And I think we learned a little bit on Homer, but we will use the powers of the town to try to get Edison to move them. By the way, they've done a super job for us. Good. Uh, mentioning the utilities, I know one of my neighbors, uh, when I mentioned we were going to have this program, asked me, she said, are they going to put the utilities underground while they have these streets all ripped up? And uh, I, under I did ask you that question, and you said no. And was that even considered uh, as part of this, do you know? I don't know well, whether the uh, town's consultant did consider it, but I think it would be cost prohibitive because uh, a rough estimate was $6 million just for Main Street. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that would be quite an additional <laughs> amount. Right. Um, I know one of the big concerns is parking, and perhaps uh, you could elaborate a little bit on what, where the parking is going to change, where there's now parking, where there won't be any, where there's now one type of parking, where it will be, stricted, be restricted and so on. Could, perhaps you could... Uh... Well, the, it will be restricted on uh, Front Street uh, between uh, Main and Concord. Uh, those driveways will be closed up and we'll, there will be one driveway between what is now the Sunnyside and Dave's TV and another one by the, uh, the bank, Framingham Trust. But there will be on-street parallel parking. So what we took away will almost be replaced by on-street parallel parking. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, in front of the library, then it won't go that fast, so the parking there no. will be the same we'll as it be has the same. always been. Yes. All right. And uh, now, Sunnyside, will they be then losing the, uh, and, the and the florist, will they be losing the parking that's uh, the pull in, the pull -in yes. parking, right? They will be losing that, but they will gain approximately four places in front of their uh, establishments mm -hmm. along the curb. Okay, fine. We have uh, um, received today from the uh, uh, Middlesex County Commissioner's in, uh, Office a preliminary plan of the off-street parking that we have here. Uh, roughly, we figure we're going to lose between 20 and 30 parking spaces. Can, so we are working very closely with Conrail, Selectman, Jim Somerville. The executive administrator is uh, negotiating with Conrail at this time to see if we can purchase the land. And if we can purchase it, I don't know if we can get a zoom in on it. This is a, uh, a preliminary plan of what can be done. This is not, um, is that coming out clear enough, Ed? Yeah. Okay. We could get approximately 150 parking spaces down there using this format. You may want to do it a little differently and things. Where you see the red line is where the town is presently leasing from Conrail. Conrail's land actually goes where the green lines are, so we could add to the present uh, parking. And hopefully, uh, uh, Mr. Somerville and the selectmen will be able to successfully negotiate with Conrail and acquire that land. And eventually, going down the road, in my opinion, you're going to see MBTA put a station or a, something very similar to what you have in Natick. So we need all of that land over there. I'd like to, I'd like to add to that, yeah. just for clarification, that is off of Front Street, and the area that he's talking about is what's now a dirt area for parking behind the Charmant Bank. Uh, we've all been very concerned about the parking and the, uh, the access uh, to downtown, and the thinking behind us is to have that area for longer-term parking and have the parallel parking for merchant access in, get your business done, and get out so that people can conveniently get in to the, do their shopping, to do their access to the whatever it might be that's in the merchant area downtown. And uh, we see this as, as a very important uh, aspect of the project. Are you suggesting that perhaps the uh, on-street parking right near the stores and so on be like 10 or 15 minute limit? I, I think the intent is to uh, show them uh, to be, what, 20 minute access type things, uh, Bob? I wouldn't think it would be much more than that. Uh, probably closer to 15 minutes if they're mm -hmm. in and out. Most of the stores that are down there now, unless unless the complexion of the uh, stores change, uh, it should be in and out 15 minutes or so. 
whose job is it to designate park limited uh, parking like that? And, and, and I mean, is that yours or the selectmen's or and? Uh, Generally, I make recommendations to the board of selectmen. Uh, I believe at this point the the plan itself uh, shows. Um, certain type parking areas. We're going to be losing a lot of on-street parking, but we're going to be gaining it in other areas, which is going to be helpful. It should facilitate traffic uh, movement through town. should make it a lot easier for people to get to where they want to go. Now, during the construction itself, this is going to be the worst time for the parking. Um, do, you have any, do you have any suggestions for people? <laughs> the only suggestion I have to everybody is, please bear with us. It'll get over very shortly. There is, a, <laughs> there is another parking area that we're looking at in the downtown area, and that's at the um, uh, town hall. And we will r extend, if they can work out an agreement with the uh, butters, from Main Street to Cherry Street with access and egress on on both sides so that we are trying to build up parking areas that people that might want to go to town hall that are using uh, parking in front of stores and things will be able to utilize that and keep those spaces open. There is another problem we talked about coordinating and we have to work very closely with Conrail because Conrail is going to replace the, um, the crossing and that we don't know exactly right now how it's going to work. And they're talking about taking a week to do that and closing it down. Two weeks? Two weeks. Pardon me. But we have, another, uh, we have another meeting scheduled with them. And hopefully they'll either work at night or on the weekends uh, and try to get it done in that period of time. What kind of a crossing are they? It's a rubberized crossing that they're going to take in place of what they have down there now. Is that similar to what I've seen, for instance, in Framingham? Yeah. So yes. that you, okay. you have a pretty smooth ride going over. Yeah. How about at Cherry Street? Cherry Street, no. No, just, just on Main Street. Cherry Street's been upgraded. Yeah. yeah. Ellen, do all towns who go through this sort of thing have the kind of problems we seem to have? Or uh, uh, I presume we're not unique. <laughs> I haven't met a community yet that hasn't uh, experienced uh, almost everything that, that you're anticipating. But I do applaud you and also the cable TV station for allowing uh, people to come and, and talk about and, and explain uh, what the various roles are in, in the program that, you know, the project that's coming up. I, I think if there's one very important ingredient that has to be sustained, it's communication. Uh, the chief mentioned that, you know, in the, in the not too distant future, the detour areas will be established and he indicated that cable TV and your local newspaper will carry information about that. Um, it's very important to get as much information out to the public and I think in that way it encourages their patience and it lets them know that we're not insensitive to their, you know, to their needs and at the same time we ask them to exercise a lot of patience with us. <laughs> Right. Incidentally, I, I don't think you could hear us be, between the first segment and the second segment. Something came up. And, of course, Ken's going to be working very closely on this. Ben's going to be working very closely on this. And one of these jokers <laughs> said that uh, this was going to be the Ben and Ken show or the Ken and Ben show. <laughs> so I think, I have a feeling that's going to stick. Who was the bear? <laughs> well, you so, know, the only thing that I can say to the people out there, we're all here to help put this project together as easily as we can without, a, without a, as few problems as we can get. And we'll hope that they'll bear with us. And we will have problems. There's no way of getting around it. Uh, you know, you're, uh, to give you a, a thing, when I first came down here in 1983, uh, I took a traffic count on, on uh, 135, and um, it was 16,000 vehicles a day going over the road. And I asked the state to go back in their records, and in 1980, or 1979, it only showed about 7,000 vehicles. And again, last year, Bob and I took dif different traffic counts all over town. And, uh, and I think uh, Route 135 was up to over 20, was it? 
22,000, something like that. And we're going to have it. And I think one of the, uh, you know, I, I dropped this in Bob's lap. We hot topped, uh, we hot topped Main Street. And I went to Bob. I said, all right, Bob. I said, we're going to hot top Main Street from the top of the hill at Prospect Street down to, uh, to Union Street. I said, now, how do you want to do it? I said, we'd like to detour the traffic. No problem. He yeah, said, we'll just send them right down. Right. We'll just send them right down uh, Chestnut Street, right down. They'll go off. About 7.30 in the morning, I get this call. Get up here. <laughs> We had traffic back from <laughs> Union Street right into Holliston, all the way up into their town. And you don't realize the magnitude of the traffic until you stop. And once you stop, it builds up. Ashland is a very unique situation. It's like a hub, and everybody goes through it. You know, that's a good point. And there are a number of people, especially at the rush hour, who are really just passing through. <laughs> and um, is there any way that we can uh, help to warn these people uh, when it's going to come time for this? Because I'm sure they'd like to avoid us as much as we'd like to have them avoid our downtown That's section. That's the local uh, newspapers. We'll be using the, mm -hmm. the Milford paper. We'll be using the Middlesex News. Uh, I'm not quite sure if the uh, uh, Worcester Telegram would uh, printed it, or if, even if it would be seen, mm -hmm. the Marlboro paper. We'll get it out to as many uh, weekly and daily newspapers as we can, just for that purpose to alert these people that we're going to be doing uh, construction downtown. Now, when the construction is all finished, uh, as, as we were mentioning, some of the longer-term parking will be not as quite as convenient to some of the locations to which people will be going, and Tom, you expressed on behalf of the chamber a uh, concern about pedestrians. A lot of people who heretofore have been just drivers are going to find themselves driving and then suddenly they'll be parking their car and they become pedestrians. And we're going to have a lot more crossing back and forth across streets. Tom, I think the chamber had a suggestion about this sort of thing, didn't they, for some extra pedestrian crossings? or? Well, we've, we've worked with the project people in terms of timing the lights and for, for accessibility for uh, safe crossing. Um, right now, in a couple of locations, it's uh, take your life in your hands. Uh, it's bad enough to be driving, let alone trying to walk across. And I, I believe, Ken, that uh, there are controlled crosswalks yes, uh, are. at each of the light yeah. locations. That's true. And uh, each of those will be... Uh, uh, Pedestrian action. Pedestrian, uh, there are actually uh, cross markings. Yes, have cross and there'll be buttons to act, yes. activate the lights. And uh, there are some, some things that we're discussing within the chamber now to, uh, to help uh, with little programs that uh, some of the other communities are doing. We're not quite ready to present that yet, but uh, Bob, uh, we've approached Bob with a little bit of it. And so I think there are some things we can do. And it's a matter of highlighting and having it to where there's an area they can cross and it's controlled so that. The, Know, can, can be safe at doing that. One of the things that's occurred to me as we've talked here is that uh, we've talked about the uh, access through town and, and what have you. Most of the work that we have discussed here today has to do with the urban systems, which is the downtown area. There is another project uh, that is going to be going to uh, bid soon. It's called the Topics, which are five main intersections uh, for upgrade. And uh, that probably will have more of an impact on traffic going through town than, than the downtown section would. Yes, Ben? Yeah, I was going to say there are two more projects. Yes, that's right. There are two. You're right. right. You have the two bridges over High Street, and the state was very nice. And they took over the town bridge, and they're going to build two bridges, not one. I'm sorry, not High Street. House Street. House Street. House Street. Uh, Conrail is going to raise High Street. state has funded the, uh, the uh, rebuilding of the approaches. And they're all going to fall, I think, in either this year or the first part of next year. So you've got about 10 different things besides the developments. And it's one horrendous <laughs> be very mess. interesting. Ellen, speaking of the topics program, now that falls under the uh, Department of Public Works yes. also. Mm -hmm. Now, as I understand it, the Ashland topics program is sort of behind the uh, urban systems and uh, in timing will probably not fall in this year. Is that correct? 
Well, I'm, I understand that it will be advertised this year. Um, it's a little premature for me to be able to tell you exactly uh, when, you know, when the first intersection will start or whether several will start together. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is, you know, what Ben is talking about is uh, very important for the decision makers in the community to think about. Um, the department recognizes that timing and sequencing of things is very important, and we're not out to disrupt the world. So, it, you know, um, I can't uh, encourage you enough to start working with the department and looking at, you know, our, our schedule, which sometimes slips for advertising, and look at, you know, the progress of the downtown reconstruction and the plans for the bridges and all, and really look at it in a more comprehensive way, and uh, we'll help with that. But it, it really is important to, uh, to plan that very well. Yeah, that, that's very important, that communication. As a result, we had a meeting uh, with the uh, chamber members, and we had Ben come to the meeting, and we presented all the plans for both the urban systems and the topics. And as a result of a lot of the discussions that we had about the two projects, we found some things that had to be changed in the topics, which in effect really caused some delay. Uh, but we feel that uh, those changes are going to be very worthwhile. Ken, you were involved in some of those. There were accesses to some of the uh, uh, turns at some of the intersections and things of that nature. So communication means a lot, and understanding it to, to, to have a good product is very important. And uh, it is going to be very trying, very, going to have to have a lot of patience, and we're going to have to work very closely with each other. And, uh, it'll work if we, uh, we all stay together with it. Bob, the uh, budget time is coming up. <laughs> How does this impinge on your budget or do the cost of the extra people to uh, uh, implement traffic control come out of the one million seven that the... Uh, all costs for uh, detail officers will come out of the existing contract that was funded I by the see. state. The, okay. It will cost the town nothing. That's good. Yeah, for a change. <laughs> you might have a little trouble at town meeting getting through <laughs> anything more. Uh, Ken, tell us a little bit about these orange stakes that were put in places last year. I know uh, they were, uh, some were put in, you know, a foot or two in onto people's lawns, and then there was another stake another six uh, feet in or so. And I know I heard people saying, what are they going to do? Are they taking some of my land and so on? What are those really for? Those aren't for land taking. Those are for control of the road. Those stakes are placed beyond the tallest slope with an elevation on it. And from that stake, we get the finished grade, and then we measure down to the top of the uh, dense graded stone and then to the gravel and to the subgrade. Those are for our control. Mm -hmm. And the areas that would be damaged would be placed with uh, loam and seed. Okay. And any land taking that, I don't know whether there was any land taking in connection with this, but if so, that's, no, that has already been taken care of and yes, so on. Yes, the land taking was done by the town of Ashland. So if no one was approached yet, they don't have to worry, right? <laughs> that's, that's true, <laughs> okay. yes. Um, I know some of those stakes have come up in the winter. and I We'll have to check the elevations. Yeah, this, they may have to re spring. recheck them a little bit. Okay, well, that's good. The other... Um, uh, thing I noticed it uh, even with the work that was done uh, last year, I know it's created a lot of dust. And as a housekeeper, I noticed that there's a lot of dust, and I know the cars get. Uh, um, is there is there anything that people can do that will, uh, or anything that the people in, our, in the construction of this can do to kind of keep that down or? Well, we really can't eliminate it, but what we do is we place calcium chloride over the uh, excavated areas, and also we have an item for uh, water control. And uh, although that's a little bit of a waste of a natural resource, I mean, we like to use that as a last resort, but we can't apply water over the affected areas. But the calcium the chloride calcium actually uh, holds the dust down. Holds yes, the dust down. Well, I guess with our water problems, <laughs> we'd, we'd sort of opt for that solution instead of the use of water wherever it's practical, probably. Yes. Okay. I think the term is minimize it. Though. Yes, <laughs> right. And um, what, um, what other concerns does anyone have, or is there anything that anyone would like to say before we close our, our program? Well, the only thing I'd like to say, I've had the opportunity to work with Ken and the 
stayed and they've been very professional. Anything that we ask them to do, they try to do it. There are certain things they can do and they can't do. But they're very concerned with what's going on there and I couldn't recommend them any highly for their professionalism. Good, thank you. Uh, I would like to say we had put up little, a couple of little posters mentioning that people could send in questions. If we get any after the fact, I'll try to uh, try to find, uh, route them to the right person and get an answer to someone if their name and uh, phone number or address is on it. The other thing would be that if anyone does have any questions, Ben, would you be willing to have people uh, oh. send their questions direct uh, to the can, highway department? They can, and actually, uh, as this project was getting underway, uh, most of the things were directed at the highway department. And I would suggest, and I think Ellen sort of alluded to it, is that when you get closer to the topics, maybe we can have another session like this and try to explain to the people what's going on, what the timetables are, and what's involved. It's a very good idea. Okay. Okay, well, uh, again, I guess, unless anyone has any further question, I think I'd like to again just thank you, Tom, for coming on you behalf of the Chamber of Commerce and Chief Gun Friday for taking part. And Ken, I hope the Ken and Ben show <laughs> <laughs> is very <laughs> successful. And uh, Ellen, I want to thank you very much for taking time to come and join with us today, too. And Ben, I think you're going to be hearing from a lot of people. Well, I hope so. And, uh, you already hear from a lot of people. Right, you already <laughs> hear, so you're used to it. And uh, again, I hope the, I don't know whether you want to call it the Ben and Ken or the Ken and Ben show, but whatever it is, I hope it's. Com no, B comes before I hope K. It, I, I, I hope that, uh, I hope it uh, comes to a great conclusion. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us today and uh, send in your questions to Ben. <laughs> okay. I think that's all we have today, okay?